Joining us right now to talk about that and much more is Paul Ryan. He is now a partner at Solomir Capital and the vice chairman of Tenio. And Paul, welcome. It's great to see you here. Hey, thanks for having me. Good to be back nice with to you. See you. So Good to see you too. We have had a, a slew of other candidates who have come through Squawk Box. Chris Christie this week, Nikki Haley recently, and others. Do any of them stand a chance at this point with challenging Donald Trump? Because yes. when you look at what they're 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 down by twenty yeah. points, maybe more right. in any of the polls that you see. Yeah, I think the key do not discount the Americans for Prosperity endorsement of Nikki Haley two days ago. That's actually a really big deal. And the reason that that's a really big deal is you could say that Ron DeSantis's big advantage over Nikki Haley was his ground game in Iowa, which is impressive. Americans for Prosperity has an extremely impressive ground game. Uh, this is the Koch Network's um, ground game. They just gave that to Nikki Haley. So not only does that level her up in Iowa with Ron DeSantis, that gives her a ground game in all these other states. And the counter plays to her advantage. So I'm not saying I'm a, you know, all for Nikki Haley. I'm for beating Donald Trump. I'm for any Republican who can beat Donald Trump. But I think if you had to pick a growth stock, I think Nikki's the growth stock. And the fact that she got this endorsement, I think, matters a lot. So the question is, since more than about half Republicans do not want Donald Trump to be our nominee, I'm among those half, can someone consolidate the sport in time to win? And the question, I think, I think that, that's, that's possible. I think that's possible. Is it? He's got 66 percent in the polls, though, against the other candidates. He, right. He's... I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I think it's still plausible because things can still happen. She's got a lot of momentum. After Iowa, you could see a consolidation. We'll see what happens in Iowa, but you could see a consolidation. And if, and if one person can quickly consolidate the non-Trump field, I think because of these other atmospherics like AFP's endorsement and the rest, you could see you know a plausible contention for the nomination. Here's the reason. In the, in the head-to-head polls, People do better against Joe Biden than Donald Trump does. I think the only person Biden can beat is Trump. And frankly, I think he does beat him. Because you know why? Democrats come home at the end of the day. And Democrats will come home if they're motivated. And you know what motivates Democrats? Donald Trump. So I think Biden still ends up beating Trump at the end of the day. Um, but I do not think he can beat any of these other candidates. The if if Chris like Christie, that. Ron DeSantis, like Nikki Haley are up against Donald, uh, Joe Biden, they win. Nikki beats Joe Biden by like 13 points in some polls. In Wisconsin, she's beating him by 10 points. That's an incredible But poll. here's the question. You're taking one poll on that side saying that Nikki Haley would, would, would beat him, uh, beat Biden, that is. Yes. But then you're saying you don't believe the polls. The no, polls I do believe the polls. Right no, 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 actually no. Trump would beat Biden, I, too. I, I do believe the polls that Donald Trump is way in the lead in the Republican primary. That is for sure the case. No, but it's no, almost, almost prohibitively. Almost you look prohibitively. at the national level, and then you also look. States, well, that's, yeah. that's what I'm. That's the, look what's going on in my mind when he asked right? it's You got to state by state. Okay, but you can look at the five, what is it, five of the six swing, swing states. states. He, was, uh, he was only down in Michigan, I think. Right? So what do you think those are wrong? I mean, that. Yeah, I think I think Democrats come home if they're really motivated. And I think I think it's hard to motivate. And not reflected in in the polls today because yeah I've been in politics a long time and through a lot of presidential cycles I ran for vice president right. in 2012 and in lots of churn up, happens you were up too what's that you, we were up too we were, we were beating at this time uh, Mitt and I I wasn't even on the ticket then Mitt was beating you know Barack Obama I've right. seen this movie before right. and I'm saying Paul you, you Trump motivates you Democrats you saw Musk yesterday I mean I have a problem with that the first amendment stance Nikki Haley has on and on, on, on yeah I don't agree and, with that either well it's you know, but I, I'm, she's I also winning. She's almost like a neocon in certain respects. I don't want to see Joe Biden become the next president, and I don't want to see Donald Trump become the so next you can president. I want to see a conservative not become the next not president. Not everyone's perfect, but Nikki Haley exactly. is as close to. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm not. I want it. just one. I'd be happy if if Christie or Ron, you know, DeSantis gets the nomination. Um, I think Nikki's in the poll position here. I think she's. I think she's getting a lot of momentum. I think it's, she's got a very strong candidacy, but I also think she's the most appealing general election candidate we've got. Well, right how, now. how soon do you need to see some consolidation around one of these candidates? It's a good question. I, I think that's a good question. I, I think basically around New Hampshire is when you have to see this consolidation come in fe by February. You know, between between Iowa Before and South, South Carolina. Carolina or well, I think you'll know by South Carolina. I think either Christie gets in, stays in, or gets out after New Hampshire. Same with DeSantis in Iowa. So I think the map makes the consolidation story you for see, you. You uh, see, Governor Christie was on the other day. His contention is that once Meadows flipped... Yeah. Yeah, I've heard him say that. He's convinced there will be a felony conviction. Do, do you... Yeah, I mean, I, look, I just, obviously I'm not a big Trump sympathizer, but the problem is the people who go against him on the left, you know, make him a victim. All these New York right. cases seem pretty BS to me. 
Yeah. But 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 some of these other cases are pretty legitimate, uh, like the federal cases, and that's where I think he is in tough water. And again, so there's so more story may, to play out here. That makes it really hard for this man to win a general election. I can a tell general you, election, but what about you aren't going to vote for the guy? Does it make him uh, even more popular with the base, though? With the base, but you think the suburban Milwaukee in the wild counties are, who didn't like him before January 6th are going to like him more now? So that the new swing voter in America is the suburban voter, and it's going to be in four states. It's going to be Nevada, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. You're, you're a suburban Wisconsin. You're growing a beard to go kill Bambi. Well, I, don't li I live in rural Wisconsin. To go kill Bambi. Wisconsin. Yeah, that's right. But I represented it. I represent the Milwaukee suburbs. In addition, it's not to a no what are the four states? Not a November beard. It's a it's, it's a deer. Season no, I, I'm a deer hunter. So this is a deer hunting beard. Um, Nevada, Wisconsin. Bad ending in that movie. Georgia, and Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. So that's where it all comes down. I think that's that's where it comes down. You could throw a Michigan in there, maybe. What do you think about what Kevin McCarthy was saying? About Joe about, Biden. About Joe Biden and about President Trump, whether he could, about President Biden or President Trump, whether either. Yeah, I mean, look, Kevin's unrestrained now because he's not Speaker of the House. You're and, not Speaker of the House. And, I mean, yeah, so you can, when you're Speaker, you have, to, you have to mind your members and their political fortunes, and so you have to be careful about what you say so you don't screw up your members. Yeah, that's real easy so, with this caucus. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Kevin is a little less restrained. Look, I, 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 I've known Joe Biden for many years. I've personally liked the man, but I haven't spoken to him personally, you know, for a couple of years. So I can't say he's in serious cognitive decline. He appears to be. We live in a visual age. We live in. I know. That's eating. what I was saying when Kamala Harris. And so Harris if you just says, look at him and you know, listen it's on to his tape. speech, he, he seems yeah. like he's in decline. It's on so tape. I think, that, I think he's. he's you don't very need anecdotes candidate. about what he's like at meetings that you're attending. It, it, it's all that's on right. camera. That's, that's, my, that's my point. That's my point. What, people will then say, "Okay, Donald Trump is only a few years younger." Is people age at different rates? Look, yeah. I, I don't want to sound like I'm defending Trump, but I think he's aging better than than than, than Joe Biden is. Yeah, Charlie. My Mon point is, Charlie Trump is so toxic. Yeah. My point is. What I don't want to do is blow another presidency. And I think Trump would blow a presidency for us. Not only that, well, he'll give us ticket track. He'll cost us seats again, like he did in 20 and 22, and in 18. He'll cost us seats in the House. He'll cost us seats in the Senate. I think we win the Senate no matter what because the map is so good for us. But I think we'll do better than if we have a, a DeSantis or a Haley or a Christie as our nominee.